Hello everyone, and welcome back. Took a little longer than I wanted to, but today I'm coming to you with the Hurricane Weapon Guide. We're going to go over all the mods for the weapon, and all the overclocks. So without further ado, let's get into the game. Alright, the Hurricane. I probably spent more time with this weapon than any of the other new weapons, so I think I have a little bit of justification in talking about it and how the mods interact with the overclocks. So at a basic level, it's a guided missile launcher. You fire out missiles and they home in on the cursor. You can stop this from happening by switching to another weapon while they're in flight, and then they'll just be directed at the last thing you were aiming at when you had the weapon in hand. By default, the missiles do good direct damage, very good area damage, in a good area, has a large magazine, decent reserves, and pretty good rate of fire. However, I'll prioritize certain stats over others when I'm building this weapon. Unlike most of the other weapons, I don't think the Hurricane really needs the ammo mod, it's really not as essential, and with the base magazine size it only gives you two extra mags, which is nothing to scoff at for sure, it brings you up to a total of 10 mags in reserve, assuming you don't take the magazine size increase. So while it's not a bad idea to take more ammo, I really think taking the extra damage is worth it. That or if you're building for area of effect, taking the increased blast radius could also be a good idea. Personally, I prefer the direct damage. With most of my builds, at least. In the second tier, we have bigger jet engines or anti-tank missiles. 300% extra armor breaking, or a speed and turn rate increase for the rockets. Personally, I think the stock rockets move very effectively already. I don't think the bigger jet engine is necessary, although you can definitely feel the difference when using it in-game. So personally, I take armor break just to help my teammates out and also line up crits on big enemies more easily, but that's beside the point. Either one of these is a good choice. It's just whether you want to hit more shots more quickly, or if you want to hit more shots from harder angles on things like Praetorians. In the third tier, we have mag size or fire rate. So basically this gives you twice the uptime or more DPS. Personally, I would opt for the DPS on a no overclock build. And the fourth tier. Just in a hotfix earlier today, we actually got a stat bonus shown on the card for weak point damage. Up until now, we couldn't see what it actually was, so it was kind of a toss-up between this and an extra 5 area damage. However, we now know that that weak point damage bonus is 50%. So, yeah, unless you are deliberately running a build that doesn't or is unable to hit weak points, you're gonna want to take the weak point damage bonus, because even if you aren't actively aiming for weak points, this is a massive increase and really cannot be ignored easily. So we're going to take the weak point damage. And the fifth tier is absolutely the hardest tier on this weapon to choose between. Nitroglycerin compound increases your damage the longer your rockets fly. I'm not sure about exact numbers on this. I've heard a lot of different figures thrown around up to double depending on the distance. But as I don't have those exact num numbers hammered down, I'm not going to make any assumptions. Then we have the stun, a three second stun with a 25% chance. So if you're taking this build up until this point, how I have it, you're firing 4 rockets per second, and that means you have, in theory, a 100% chance to stun an enemy every second. And that's if you're just having average luck. So this stun mod is very good, but obviously if you're taking this weapon out to kill large enemies, dreadnoughts, oppressors, you're going to have a harder time making good use of the stun. However, anything smaller than a Praetorian or a Praetorian is going to struggle against you with this mod. And finally, we have Napalm Infused Rounds. You get bonus damage as heat. Unlike the PGL, this is not converting your damage into heat, it's extra damage as heat. So it's not fire damage, it's actual temperature change. So it's not a direct 50% damage increase, it's just setting enemies on fire incredibly quickly. Now I'll tell you why I think this is the best mod in this tier in general purpose build. This mod, Napalm Infused Rounds, does something that no other gun or weapon can do. Lead Storm has the hot bullet, or the, excuse me, the burning hell overclock. This activates a cone of fire whenever you're firing the weapon in front of your gun. However, that cone's only about 5 meters, so in order, in order to burn an enemy, you have to get pretty close to them. Your alternative to this on the minigun is hot bullets. So this will make it whenever you get high on heat on the weapon, meaning in the red, your bullets will carry heat damage on them. Now, needless to say, this takes a while to spin up to actually use those hot bullets at range. So basically, hot bullets is a long range fire option, and burning hell is an instant but close range fire option. Hurricane doesn't have this issue. Hurricane applies heat instantly and at long range. Due to this, I think this is the best weapon in the game for synergizing with volatile bullets right now. 
which is also the best build I think that exists for this weapon, aside from a dread killing build. And those really can't be compared to each other because dreads can't be set on fire. So this is my normal build here. This is what I would run with no overclock, and it's also what I run with most of the overclocks. So let's go over some of the differences between overclocks now. First, we'll start with the one that I think is the worst, is manual guidance cutoff. As I went over briefly at the beginning, whenever you switch weapons, the guidance on the missiles is cancelled, meaning that they'll fly towards whatever you were targeting last. This overclock allows you to do that simply by releasing the trigger, and also gives you 30% more projectile speed. For example, right there, 33% projectile speed and releases a trigger. Releasing the trigger cuts off the guidance system. So half of this overclock is something that you can achieve just by gameplay skill. If you want to cut off the guidance on your rockets, which you will want to do sometimes when aiming at a distant enemy, but you need to attend to other things, it might be wise to fire off five or six rockets, then switch weapons so that whenever you look away from that target, your rockets don't pull back and fly towards you or whatever it is that you're looking at. So if this is the only overclock you have, equip it. It's not bad. It gives you that projectile velocity bonus, but if you have pretty much any other overclock aside from the unstables that maybe you don't want to play that playstyle, this overclock is basically outclassed. Which is rather unfortunate because I think it's a cool mechanic, it's just unfortunate that that mechanic already exists elsewhere in the game, so maybe if they changed it to where switching weapons didn't cancel the guidance cutoff, then this would be a more viable overclock, but even then, I don't think there's really a place for it in the meta, in the meta right now compared to the other stuff available. So let's go to the two more niche builds now. Plasma Burster Missiles and Mine Layer System. Let's go over Plasma Bursters first. So you're probably going to panic a little bit because there's a lot of red on that card, but let me explain to you how this works. Essentially, whenever you fire these rockets, they're going to go inside of an enemy and constantly turn around inside of them and hit them over and over again. Due to these weapons having penetration, they're able to do this over and over. So if you do land a couple of these rockets inside of a dread and hold your cursor on him, they can spin around for a good amount of time and make it pretty difficult for that dread to do much. However, they got nerfed pretty heavily before the update came out, so uh, they're not as good as they once were. But if you're taking these, I would highly recommend not opting for weak point damage as it's all basically all area damage, even though the alternate area damage is getting nerfed by this, for example. If we don't, don't have that equipped, this is worth 5, but whenever we do have plasma missiles equipped, this is only worth 2, which is rather unfortunate, but, you know, do what you gotta do. However, with the extreme ammo nerf that comes from Plasma Burster Missiles of 108, it may actually be worth taking the ammo in the higher tiers, especially since that direct damage really, really doesn't play a, a role at all. You could take the effect radius, but also that's cut in half, or cut down significantly by Plasma Burster Overclock. So now that I'm looking, thinking about it more, definitely take the ammo in this tier. I misspoke when I said you could consider it. You definitely should. And bigger jet engine, I'm still trying to figure out exactly if this is a helpful or hindrance to the plasma burster missile staying inside of the enemy. I'm not exactly sure at this moment in time, but the armor break still works pretty effectively even when the missiles are just inside of the enemies bouncing around. So I would still consider taking armor break over velocity. And then fire rate versus nano missiles. Since you can only have so many rockets active at a time per the patch notes, I think the better pick is probably magazine size in this tier since with plasma burster missiles, you should be more focused on keeping your missiles inside of an enemy rather than firing off a lot of them at a time. So in conclusion, this is probably the build I would take for plasma burster missiles right here. Go ahead and switch that back. Next we have Mine Layer. Let's go and de-equip Plasma Missiles so we can see the actual stat changes. Mine Layer gives you no guidance system and less ammo. However, whenever your mines impact terrain, they will, or excuse me, whenever your rockets impact terrain, they will turn into mines. Initially, I didn't think this overclock would be very good, but after playing with it a little bit, I really kind of vibe with the playstyle. It's very interesting, and the, uh, the blast radius on the planted mines is quite large. So if you're a little tactful with it and run a bunch of grunts over two or three of the rocket mines, they can do quite a bit of damage. Also, what I like about this is there's no direct penalty to using the weapon as normal with this overclock, so shooting an enemy in the face is going to do the same amount of damage, it's just that you have the ammo reduction, so you're incentivized to plant those mines and get the AoE on groups that you're luring into a trap. 
Unfortunately, the mines do have a half-life of about 10 seconds, so you can't do those old crazy dread kills you'd see with NG proxy mines. So it's not quite crazy if you do the setup. You really can't stack mines unless you have four gunners with the same thing. But overall, the playstyle is very interesting. It's definitely viable. It's not bad by any means, and it leaves the core of the weapon untouched, minus the guidance system being disabled. So not a bad overclock at all, in my opinion. Next, we have Salvo Module. This doesn't actually have any statistical changes on the weapon, but if we read the description, we can see that it does change the playstyle pretty significantly. So basically, you hold now, instead of holding the button to fire and guide missiles, you hold the button to charge up a shotgun blast of missiles, shooting all nine tubes at once. And once again, we don't ex have exact damage numbers for the extra loaded missile that it says there is extra damage for each loaded missile. We don't know exactly what those numbers are yet, or at least I'm not aware of them. Maybe someone out there is. But the negative on this is actually not entirely true. If you shoot the an, a non-fully charged salvo and release the trigger afterwards, the, miss the missiles will come back under your control after about a second. So you can't really use it to do close range guided attacks, but at long ranges you can still use guided missiles with this overclock despite what the tooltip says. So overall, this is another one of those overclocks that, while it will affect your playstyle, it doesn't completely take away the base weapon from you, and with a little bit of tinkering and feeling out that skill curve, you can still use guided missiles, and you don't lose any damage for this overclock. So I can see some of the best players probably leaning towards salvo module for big burst damage, and then just getting used to the tempo of releasing several rockets at a time and guiding them. All in all though, not exactly my playstyle. I prefer the next three overclocks we're gonna talk about, but overall, salvo module, not bad at all. Really good, gels very well with a lot of playstyles. Now we'll go over the cleans. Overtuned feed mechanism is probably the overclock that I consider to be the best right now, as it gives you a pretty significant DPS increase by giving you that plus one fire rate. So if you stack that with a fire rate mod on the base weapon, you can be firing at 60% faster than the base weapon does, which, especially when com combined with the napalm rockets or even nitroglycerin rounds at long range, can do a pretty hefty amount of damage very quickly. And the projectile velocity is just icing on the cake. Either this overclock or the other clean are the ones that I would favor for a heat-based build synergy with volatile bullets, just because this one can apply heat so quickly and the increased area clean can apply heat in a wider area to more enemies at a time. However, the way that I play Volatile Bullets, I only use it on larger enemies, uh, admittedly to my detriment, as I usually don't use enough of it, but I can definitely see a playstyle where the larger AoE from the next overclock would help you more with a heat-based build. But overall, so far, this is the best feeling overclock to me, just because it dumps out rockets absolutely at an insane rate. Next, we have Fragmentation Missiles. This is a simple one, it's basically just splintering shells for the hurricane, slightly larger AoE, and a little bit more AoE damage. So with this, you might want to switch up the build just a little bit and opt for increased blast radius to get that big, big radius, because if you aren't focusing on direct damage at all, then you're going to be shooting the ground anyways, you might not want to worry about having the direct damage in that tier. So that could be something to consider. Let's just opt for that for now. Once again, I'd probably still keep the fire rate over the magazine size because the Hurricane does reload very quickly. That 3.5 second reload time is significantly faster than the Thunderhead with its base reload of five. That and animation canceling pulls that down under three seconds by just a little bit. Once again, if you aren't going to be aiming at weak points or the enemies at all, you'd opt for zip fuel. And then once again, in the last tier, it's really up to you. Uh, the stun would be very good because you could hit a lot of enemies at the same time. Nitroglycerin because if you're shooting cross cave, you can hit the enemies very easily since you have AoE. And then if you're running volatile bullets, napalm infused rounds will definitely be your go-to. So like a lot of other things, this really is just a very flexible build. It's a clean overclock so you can really take whatever you want on the base weapon. But it, I think I would still opt for overtuned feed mechanism and these mods whenever I'm running a clean. And lastly, we have the Dread Killer, Jet Fuel Homebrew. Let me de-equip this real quick. So this gives you a massive increase to direct damage, a reduction to area, area effect radius, mag size, max ammo, and gives you extra projectile velocity. So I really don't think bigger jet engine in tier two is necessary here because you already have pretty insane speed. And even with this upgrade, the missiles don't really turn fast enough to strike enemies in my experience. So what I would probably go for is something along the lines of 
So obviously more direct damage because it's also being scaled by this. So we can see that direct damage is usually four, but when we take this overclock, it turns into 10. So don't miss out on that. Although it is very greedy, so you might struggle to use it in a four man team, but realistically it's only 72 ammo. That's a little over two mags with this build, but you should be all right. If you are using this in more of a sniper role, I can justify taking the magazine in this tier, but in my personal experience, using it as a dread killing weapon, the fire rate still reigns supreme. Obviously not gonna be taking the area damage. We want the weak point, because this is the sharpshooter build. And then really once again in the last tier, it's a toss up between, in my opinion, stun and nitroglycerin as if you're using it as a dread killer, don't use napalm because you can't burn dreads and use something like lead spray or uh, that's not the right build. Use something like compact mags or lead, lead spray for your secondary for high damage regardless of any status effect. So that's my basic rundown of all the modifications on the base weapons and the overclocks. So now I'll highlight some of the exceptional overclocks in gameplay. So salvo module. Definitely rewards a lot more risky play than any of the other overclocks. For example, fighting dreads, I'm going to be trying to get as close to them as possible so I can land all 9 rockets on a weak point. As you can see, when you do land it, it hits pretty damn hard. Also, like I mentioned, uh, the it's slightly changed mechanically, but basically if you want guidance on salvo module rockets, you just have to tap fire. So you won't be able to get your full fire rate because of this, but you will still be able to use guided missiles for small enemies like grunts and the occasional slasher that you need to just use one rocket on. Maybe your secondary is not reloaded, something like that. I'm waiting for our bliss to get here so I can actually try to chunk a distant enemy. But on stagnant enemies like this that just sit in front of you, it's very easy to do large chunks of damage. You can do self damage off of enemies though, so you gotta be a little careful about that. But if you really want the best damage, you might have to make it that sacrifice. See, Arbalist is still playing hard to get. I mean, I'm really holding back on this guy just because I'm not trying to do the force heal, but that might be the only thing that gets Arbalist in here, so let's just do that. Oh, you hate to see it. Alright. That's unfortunate, but I will retaliate in kind with a shotgun. Pretty good, pretty good. So far, the main issue I'm having with this weapon is actually reining it in and not doing too much damage to these guys, which is always a good sign. And you don't really have to get that close to them. The only reason I'm trying that hard is because I have the weak point damage mod. Which is definitely a really good choice. Just because of how much damage it does to weak points. But yeah. Ideally with Salvo you'll have every rocket fully charged. Because you get that bonus damage for every charged rocket. Now let me try to uh, land some of the single shots on them as well. So as you can see it's still respectable damage. But obviously that damage bonus from the fully charged cluster of shots is not in effect, so might not want to be going for that. So getting the hang of Salvo definitely requires a much more aggressive playstyle against this dread fight than I'm used to. So a little bit of growing pains from me. Ah, it gets away. Yeah, but overall, Salvo, very respectable. Definitely going to be in the meta. Might be the meta for dread killing. I prefer Jet Fuel Homebrew a little bit more than this, just because it doesn't require you to get close. In fact, it incentivizes you to do the opposite. But yeah, I can definitely see this being a lot of people's go-to for dread killing. And now it's Jet Fuel Homebrew's time to step up to the plate. This thing shines best when used against weak points, so I'm going to try to actually break the armor of my secondary, unlike Salvo. Salvo also had the advantage of being used against the Twins, so. As you can see, it's uh, some pretty chunky damage. I mean, sure, you take the ammo economy hit and the magazine size hit, but when built for full damage and absolute greed, this weapon absolutely shreds anything with a weak point. Just absolutely no chance. Yeah. 
As you can see, if this Dread's holding still for a single second, it's just, there's no hope for him. This is why I said this is my preferred weapon for Dread killing, as if this was a multiplayer OG Dread, he would not be letting me circle strafe him like this, he would just be absolutely tearing me apart. So that's why I prefer ones that allow me to keep my range rather than Salvo module. Salvo is definitely a lot of fun, though. But yeah, that uh, kind of makes him look like a has two dread, doesn't it? Almost enough to fool you, huh? Yeah, you know, what the hell? Let's give Jet Fuel one more. Oh, hi, buddy. Can't quite find his weak point, but I think I'm hitting it. Oh yeah, <laughs> judging by that damage, I'm definitely hitting it. This is off the same resupply, by the way. Have not uh, collected any ammo. Where's your friend? Am I gonna have to do this again? Oh, is that him up there? Yeah, it is. Where's he at? There he is. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty overwhelming. Especially since I'm not having to run up on him the same way as I am with Salvo. Don't have to be afraid of that Arbalist shotgun attack. with that shell back kill. Arbalist is being a real coward right now. It's okay though, the missiles will find him. And we're getting him within burst range here, so we can probably finish off one of these. I would prefer to get Arbalist. Ah, damn. Not quite. Tell me he burns to death on this hot rock. Damn. <laughs> it was close. Let's see if we can get a double right here. Oh, nope. Oh, with rockets that are still in the air? Easily. Alright, that's pretty dope. Yeah, I think Jet Fuel Homebrew is my go-to for dreads. Alright, overtuned feed mechanism. Like I stated before, this is probably my favorite Hurricane Overclocked right now, as it synergizes really well with Volatile Bullets, which is probably the new hotness for any Overclock in this game, due to the Hurricane's place and helping proc its uh, extreme fire damage bonus right now. So uh, we're just going to pull some eggs and see what trouble we can get ourselves into. Because these two weapons together really uh, are unbeatable when it comes to just general mobbing situations. Most large and threatening enemies that come out can be absolutely flattened in seconds. And then you have just general great AoE to mop up all the trash. There's one. osco has got our other. Ooh, we got timed that very well. Got no, one normal wave, one swarm. So there you can see the, uh, what I would call the pseudo guidance system cut off, in that you can switch weapons to have all your rockets keep flying to where you want them to go. And we have a Praetorian that is no longer with us. Ooh, a bulk too. I do have Neurotoxin, just because I don't like the breakpoints on this Volatile Bullet... Vi yeah, can't speak. Volatile Bullets Bulldog build. Because I, sometimes it doesn't finish off some mid-health enemies, so... <clears throat> having the potential for Neurotoxin gives you a chance to finish off those enemies without any extra rounds. I'm trying to kill off everything else before I deal with this bulk, just so we can see just how good this is. Not quite. There we go. Just pulling this gentleman around in a circle like it's nothing. Got that armor break, make that weak point shot easier for ourselves. I 
They don't have dead eye because I took neurotoxin, so moving and shooting is a little bit trickier than normal. At least that I'm used to. As you can see, just mopping up trash with a hurricane, burning large enemies with hurricane, and then instantly sw switching off to volatile bullets to deal with the, the larger enemies. With our massive damage boost. So, two egg swarms. Not too hard to deal with. And now let's deal with this gentleman. He is no longer with us. You're starting to get a better picture of why dreads can't be set on fire. <laughs> very, very, very strong mobbing build. Very strong single target damage build. Barring dreadnoughts. Very good for basically any event. Curse sight. Omen. Even though you can't burn the omen, even still you have volatile bullets, bulldog, which has decent single target damage, and also just incredibly high fire rate on the hurricane, you can usually deal with it even without the burn damage helping you out. Let's go ahead and uh, hang out with Betsy real quick. We do have some more bugs coming our way as well. Let's go and add to the chaos a little bit. That's not good. Hit that Mactera. Got him. Oh! That's a shame. I ran the wrong way. Got lined up by Betsy. Unfortunately, you can't burn Betsy, so no uh, bonus volatile bullet damage for us. Can be affected by Cryo, though, which is uh, kind of amazing. Let me try to hit one of those real quick. There we go. Not too shabby. I'm obviously playing very aggressively, so... Gonna be taking some downs where maybe you wouldn't in your gameplay. See what this machine event is real quick. Oh, it is an omen. Okay, maybe we stick around for this. Hold on. Once we get Betsy to stop beeping incessantly. Stand by one moment. Oh, hello. Never mind. So I record this real quick. And I jumped when we started the omen, but these guys want to party. As you can see, the base rocket turn speed is more than enough to kind of whip it around inside of a crowd if you do miss any bugs. You're just kind of sweeping your rockets from side to side. We'll make sure they all land on a target. Oh, he faked me out. And you can always switch back to the hurricane to regain control of your rockets. So, switch off, switch back, switch off. Really makes that clean overclock less than valuable, unfortunately. Alright, let's go ahead and take on the omen. Alright, omen, what you got for me? Nothing too difficult. No drones. Allow us to focus solely on DPS. I'll try to do all the damage with Hurricane. Yeah, that weak point damage is uh, definitely helping it out. And now we take this one. Ah, uh, not the one I meant to, meant to get next, but it'll do. There goes that. And that. Now we just have the Burster. Keep in mind, this is only the weak point damage mod on the base weapon and the damage. Really nothing else. If you had Jet Fuel Homebrew in this situation, Tower would absolutely be evaporating. Oops. Alright. Pretty, uh, pretty effective. Even when built for a generalist like rate of fire AoE build and fire damage. Still uh, absolutely ripped apart an omen, so this is probably my go-to from now on with Hurricane, except for Dread Killing, of course. Put some mines up there, put some on the floor. Ooh, that Praetorian's gonna cause issues. But if you do run Napalm with this thing, you can definitely still run Volatile Bullets. There's another one, okay. 
run volatile bullets and still get that pretty easy napalm proc as you really don't lose much by shooting this weapon directly at the enemies instead of at the floor. Still retains all of its direct damage and area damage when used normally, it just doesn't have the guidance system. So it's a nice little strip of land up here where the bugs are very conveniently walking across. Continue to put mines on that. Alright, not too bad. Now let's try the fuel cells. Alright, second defense. Let's see how this goes. Also, they changed the icon of the resupply drop, and I don't know how to feel about that. There's just really not much they can do. Just planting mines around your feet and running around. They really struggle a lot to, to hold anything to you. Which is why I think the stun would be so good, because in these situations where the bugs are swarming in and you just have mines all over the floor, you'd be perpetually stunning them and also preventing them from hitting you. almost swear the mines do more damage once they're planted, but I'm really not sure, so I can't speak to that yet. I believe it's just because the AoE is larger and it's hitting more enemies. Ooh, that's a lot. Very nice. Come on. Come over the string. It's, it's just so fun to watch them walk over the mines. Alright, Plasma Burster Missiles. So these have gone from what they used to be, which was an incredibly good single target damage weapon, to more of a crowd controlling option, in that since they pierce enemies you can hit multiple enemies with the same rockets, but just because of the way this weapon behaves, your missiles are more than likely going to hit the walls instead of being able to move on to the next enemy, so personally I really don't think this thing hits its stride in any category at the moment. But I'll let you watch this and be the judge of that for yourself. There is, however, a bug right now where basically plasma bursters make the rocks think they collided with something, so it just instantly kills them. So that's why I chose an escort to do this, but uh, overall, uh, plasma bursters are a little underwhelming. Uh, actually, I think it's because the plasma bursters burst a bunch of times in a row because they're technically inside an object with collision instead of an enemy. That's my understanding of why they insta-kill the rocks at least.
I will say that overall I think you're just better off with no overclock than plasma bursters right now as the direct damage of the missiles and especially if you're taking the weak point damage mod, you can really do a ton of damage to individual enemies at a time so you don't really have to worry about the whole AoEing with plasma burster missiles to do more damage. It's just kind of a weird side grade downgrade right now and I wish they hadn't nerfed it quite as hard as they did. Overall, it's still pretty effective, though. I'm sad the uh, plasma bee, bee swarm of plasma bees playstyle kind of fell off a little bit because that was very entertaining to watch. One thing about Hurricane is that in every scenario, though, it's really good at killing the beamers just because you can pop the tips off of them. Just hold this out a little bit longer and we'll be done here. So yeah, overall plasma bursters, not too great, but not too bad. And that just about does it for the hurricane. A couple of things before we go. If you aren't already following me on Twitch or in my Discord, the links for that are down below. And also, thanks to you guys and your lovely support, we now have YouTube membership. If you're not familiar with YouTube membership, just scroll on down, hit the join button, and you can see some more information about membership. I am going to start streaming on YouTube more, not just exclusively Twitch, and this will give you some additional perks while I'm live, so make sure to look into it. Since we're seeing a massive influx of new players in the community right now, I'm probably going to shelf the other weapons for the time being and make some new player oriented content, as my old new player stuff is a, a little out of date. So sit tight for that. As always, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.